consummate jazz revivalist, Mr. John Eaton. Thanks for joining us today, sir. Much appreciated. It is my great pleasure. Good to have you. So I kind of want to start off by uh, by saying, um, you know, you're one of the great interpreters, great local interpreters of the uh, American popular song. What kind of got you into these guys? You know, Hoagie Carmichael, Cole, Por Cole Porter, George Gershon. What was your inspiration to really build your career on uh, on their work? Well, I was born in 1934, so the music of the great golden age of American popular song was mainstream popular music. It wasn't an antiquarian thing on my part to go back and research these guys. It was on the radio. It was just like rock and roll became the mainstream music in the 60s and whatever is uh, hot now. So it, it remained with me and what really happened is that in the 60s uh, with the great explosion and revolution people like me even though I was only 30 years old at the time, we were left in the dust. They didn't want us, I didn't want them. Uh, and so by the 1970s it became clear that we, that uh, even though the dust had settled on the, 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 uh, the, the physical revolution itself, that the music had changed um, and we weren't going back. So all of a sudden I found myself a new role. I was the uh, I, I was a purveyor of this, and defender, and preserver of, of this uh, music, and, and that's America. So, having been a friend of Wolf Trap for, for such a long period of time, you played here, I think roughly for about 20 years, right. at the Barnes. Um, with so much material to choose from, from all these composers and, and great musicians from the past. Uh, walk us through your pro process of uh, selecting a program for each show. Well, a lot of what I am able to do at Wolf Trap it was a development of what I had already done at the, uh, at the Smithsonian for a decade. That was the first step right, to becoming a cultural commentator instead of a saloon pianist, or should I say in addition to being a saloon pianist. Um, I'd been doing programs on all of these composers in various combinations um, and developing themes about them um, for 10 or 12 years. And then uh, Wolf Trap, should, should I say at the time rather tentatively, said let's try a show in the barns. So what I do in the barns is, when, when I say it's a lighter version than uh, what I do at the Smithsonian, it isn't meant to be that it isn't profound uh, <laughs> and is its significance. It's, it's that it has more of an entertainment right. uh, uh, bias and uh, it, it, it permits me to be freer in some respects. I'm not doing a lecture. Or, uh, and actually the format that I use at the barns whatever that is, it's the John Eaton show, is what I do on the road, um, what, what I do at a, for federal judges or um, and any other group that, that wants me to do an after dinner entertainment or, or something. So that's, that's really the background. The, the question is not, do you have enough musical material? The question is, what, what are you going to leave out? <laughs> and you always end up, uh, uh, try to accommodate everyone, you always end up leave, uh, leaving out a lot of people's favorite songs. Well, I do but, but so far, uh, I, people yeah, say no. So Occasionally I get hate mail. <laughs> but it's more in the sense of, why didn't you play? Uh, well, you well, you had to leave out something. Uh, nothing personal. You only have a couple, you only have a couple hours. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's right, yeah. It's, it's always too short. Conjunction with Wolf Trap, you've released, I think up to this point, it's four uh, American popular songs. Yes. Um, John Eaton presents the American popular song recordings. Uh, what, what was the impetus for that project? Well, it started, it started really as a television series back in the early 90s. And I was able to raise a significant amount of money. And there was a uh, television producer that wanted to do this. and. The shows actually got on public television and had some legs for a couple of years, and it sank without a trace. 
Chapman's television shows. And then it was revived um, about six years ago in the form that we see it now, which is a kind of an audio radio um, uh, program with a guest, my um, longtime friend, and a very great bass player, uh, Jay Lenhart, yes. and a wonderful, uh, wonderful talker. And um, the the, uh, the uh, Wolf Trap, I, I was sort of casting around for some way to do this, and Wolf Trap to me seemed like the logical partner if they were willing, and uh, uh, that's exactly what's happened. Is is that Wolf Trap jumped on board, and uh, they they are the co-producers uh, of this series. When I'm alone with all. So there's four out now, uh, and they're available for sale yes. uh, online and a, and a variety of um, online distributors. Right. So how many more do you, do you think you expect to produce? Well, we have completed 13, which was my original mandate from the people that give the money. You know, Believe it or not, when people give you money to do something like this, they do look over your shoulder occasionally. Uh, and you have to... <laughs> Yeah, you have to find that fine line between not letting them interfere, you know, uh, but but giving them an honest progress report. So we have recorded the entire series, and as money is available, we are able to uh, produce these in their finished form. Okay. And so far, we've got four done, and uh, the fifth one is coming out. Uh, Played in Ragtime, come on in here, come on in here, Alexander's Ragtime Band. So for the, for the kiddies, for the younger generation, uh, do you have any plans to analyze anything maybe post-1990, or is it pretty much going to stay in, the, in that time frame? Let's put it this way. Uh, I, I'd say this honestly, because I, I do programs for schools, mm -hmm. elementary schools sometimes. And particularly with older kids, they will say things like, I, I don't criticize their music. You know, I, I learned long ago, yeah, you might as well go and, and jump off the Connecticut Avenue Bridge. Uh, you, you don't do that. But they can sense, they sense that you're not with them. And it's also a suspicion of an older person. Mm -hmm. you know. And the question will come, why don't you do so-and-so? Why don't you do rap? Why don't you do this? And my carefully calculated uh, politically correct answer is, I would be doing nobody any favor. <laughs> Most of all, you as a fan. Yeah. Uh, by, by analyzing the, the music, you have to be able to, you have to be able to identify with it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you do what you know and what you like. Nice. Then, then, then it, then it, then it hopefully can be educational. You're sharing, it has, you have to be sharing a love for something.